This is the best way to get rank one on Kargalgan season three. Let's talk about it. What's good, YouTube? Nugget here. Come with you today with the rank one battle for the time guide for Kargalgan in season three. So, guys, as always, we're gonna give you guys the best know how, the best tips and tricks and strategy methods when it comes to battle for the time. So, we're gonna talk Kargalgan today on the hunter side of things. But before we get us anything, make sure you guys leave a like on the video. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you don't miss a live or an upload. And without further ado, let's get straight into this now. As you can see, currently on screen, we got a minute 41 for my best record. Now, this is by no means my ultimate record. This is not what I'm going to end up with. I honestly think this is a very slow time. But without further ado, let's get straight into the team. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, man. The free to plays are not going to like this battle for the time because it is very, very, very heavily based on the latest character release. I'm a Maya Mire. Now, the highest advancement you have on her is going to determine what your score is going to be. What also is going to de determine your score is going to be the breaker Wu Jin Chul, right? I think this is the only team you can run currently, and that's going to be Mean, Wu Jin Chul, and Amamaya Mire. I haven't tried Maylene. I do kind of want to try out Maylene, but we'll probably try it out some ways down the line. Now, as far as the artifacts for them, on Mean, we're running Burning Blessing. On Wu Jin Chul, we're running 4P Solid Analysis and 4P Outstanding Connection. And on Mire, we're running Full Curse. Now, we can change up Mire's artifacts just a tad bit. There's a few artifacts I want to try out, man. Maybe like Toughness, maybe like Two Piece Curse, and a bunch of other DPS based sets. If you have any of those sets, you can definitely try that on. But this is what works personally best for me. As far as the shadows, we're going Egress, Iron, and Serbi. That's always going to be the perfect method for the hunter side of things. You can go Baruka to get that extra attack, but I think you might want to prioritize getting crits here, right? I've seen some people doing some runs with them using Serbi first, which has been very, very interesting. I might have to try that out myself. Boost that critical hit damage because honestly, this one is pretty interesting. Now, something that is very, very, very important and I think comes into play for this specific battle for the time is going to be hunter weapons. If you have the hunter exclusive weapon, you're going to be in a much, much, much better spot. My score is super, super low because while Mirai does have her weapon A7, I have no advancement. I don't even have a Wujin Chul weapon and then means his is at A0. If I get means up a bit, this will help out his heavenly blessing. We're going to use means alt, and this is going to boost team members damage by 4% for 16 seconds. Now, the higher I have it, the better off I will be. So you guys might want to consider doing that. I do have a few hunter exclusive weapon designs. I have some salvageable SSRs as well, and I do have a bunch of mana power crystal selection chests. So I honestly think I can say shave about a cool 20 seconds off of my run. But if we get into the weapons, man, you honestly are whoever has the best advancements on their hunters and their hunters weapons will win the battle. Now, if we max this out, you can see what I'm talking about now. When me uses his ult at advancement five or higher, it's going to boost the team members damage dealt by 16%. Now from 4 to 16%, that's going to be a big difference. And even Wujin Chul's weapon on advancement 0, this is going to, you know, it boost wind damage members damage by 4% just when the enemy enters the break state. And then if we max that out, look like come on look at that <laughs> like 12 percent boost and then imagine that 16 percent boost from a mean ultimate honestly there is a lot a lot a lot of things i could do better to get a better time but currently at the moment this is what i'm rocking the a0 mean weapon and then for the boy wu jin Chul, we did put on the steel longsword this will increase damage dealt to enemies that have the weakness effect so that's by 12 percent at advancement 10 and then he's also getting that increase in attack defense and hp by 10 percent since this weapon is advancement 10 if you don't have let's say means weapon what i was running was the ancient grimoire this one in increases the power gauge by 32 percent it's pretty cool honestly though as far as the team guys i don't think there is a better team to run here right if you do have the better team please let me know in the comments i'm honestly still trying to figure out if there is a better team i can use here to shorten my score but without further ado let's go ahead and get straight into the methods on how you want to play argalgan battlefield of time 
Alrighty, let's get straight into it. So off rip, we're going to start off with the boy mean. And then what we're going to do, we're going to shift about one to two times just straight in the middle. And the second I press this punishment effect, I'm going to heart switch to Amamaya Mire and then activate her ultimate. You're pretty much not even going to see it. If I really slow it down, you didn't even see me use means ultimate. So I think what's really important for this boss specifically, or really any hunter battle for the time is going to be the hard switches. So you guys don't even see me use the punishment but he will use it as you can see right so the heart switch to mira use the ultimate and then there's mean using the punishment right so the punishment is there i did activate punishment so the heart switch is how fast you're reacting guys you got to be locked in here now honestly this might be one of the worst phases one phase ones i've ever been a part of but <laughs> these mobs the rng on these mobs is so crazy it will take a lot of retries so you got to be patient this battle for the time is very exhausting i can preach that to myself but as you can see we're clearing the mobs we're doing our best and then we get about 19 seconds now i'm gonna be honest this will fluctuate a bunch right i've got in 15 seconds 11 seconds 13 seconds 19 seconds seems to be the sweet spot and then some runs i couldn't even get under 25 seconds so it really really depends and then what doesn't help is that this phase two boss does have iframe so it's not like you can attack him off rip so what i like to do is just get some hits in and then as soon i'm predicting when his iframes will end and then i'm using her basic skill two which is the kind of jump slash and then boom we're doing damage there and then two basic skills should do away with the high orc warden and then if you're wondering what my skills are leveled up for amamiya mire her kind of katana move the faster one the basic skill one is level 10 and then the basic skill two is level seven at the moment but we're gonna go ahead and qte to the boy mean because qte charges up his power gauge so we're gonna go ahead and get that out the way as we get into phase number three i am not going to use punishment here i think the cooldown might not have been available by the time Wujin Chul break. I could have used punishment, but we're using light of conviction. Really doesn't matter which one you use. The preface is though, we're gonna go ahead and use a core attack now. QT to the boy Wu Jin Chul, and now we're gonna go to town with the boy Wu Jin Chul. Now keep in mind that Wu Jin Chul's core attack will stun the opponent. So what I like to do is I like to use his basic skill one and basic skill two, kind of time up the stun. Cause if you stun him about midway to his break gauge, then boom, you can get a little bit more damage in and then you can kind of see how that looks right there. So boom, before he even disappears, he has what, like 30% of his break gauge left. Not bad, not bad. So we're running down here. We're gonna summon the shadows because Wu Jin Chul is very, very close to breaking and then when i'm about to break and it's really really hard to kind of predict when you're about to break but when i'm about to break i'm gonna hard switch to mean and then activate the punishment once more you're gonna see it. it's gonna be quick but i did act i'm i'm already here so you see break on screen but you see mean in the cut and then you see the punishment already on cooldown i'm very very fast with it. i think the hard switches is going to be your best friend in this battle for the time so it took me a lot of times to finally get this perfect attempt though with the break lining up with the hard switch to mean but we're gonna go ahead and use punishment use the ultimate right after we got shadows doing shadow things in the background <laughs> but honestly all the dps lines up and then after that a hard switch to mire again guys you're not even seeing me swap to these characters the hard switches matter greatly but let's go ahead and activate mire and now we're going to town on the boy car galgan and this part is really just a one-on-one -on -one. i'm gonna be honest or really 20 on one if you count the shadows but we're doing as much damage as we can keep in mind when he does get bigger he will have iframes but after that he relatively does not like i can attack through this and then everything he's doing right here he has no iframes relatively and then you know again the dps wasn't dps in but we're gonna go ahead and put that mask right 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 back on try to do a little bit more damage and then honestly i'm trying to kill before i see this i'll show you the power of fire i think if i do kill in that range i could get maybe like a minute 20 but again guys it all boils down to the ssr hunter exclusive weapons and we got to deal with the totem at least for now and then i freaking missed the totem with the basic skill two and it's okay because we once tap it with the basic skill one but that does run our clock down a little bit i think i could probably have saved maybe like a cool maybe three seconds like imagine if i already had that basic skill one already ready right then i probably would have got maybe times looking at maybe like a minute 35 minute 36 it really took a little time off the clock but we end out with a minute 41 so this battle for the time 
is honestly real standard, real easy, real straightforward. But what's your lineup is looking like will greatly depend. As you can see, I'm a minute ahead of a minute and some seconds ahead of number two currently. But like I said, guys, this is exactly the team you want to run. But what do you guys think of this team? What do you think of Card Galgan season three? Go ahead and leave your thoughts, theories, and comments below. And while you're at it, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all the other good stuff, and join that discourse over the Noken Mafia. And with that, I am out. Y'all take care. Peace.